Good evening, groovy citizens, and happy, fantastic Friday. You guys, it is Friday. The weekend is finally here. I don't know about you all, but my week has been very busy, productive, but busy nonetheless, with so many things to do between work, and I had a three-day mastermind class with Circle of Champions, uh, Bob and Annetta, which was absolutely amazing. So when I tell y'all, this weekend, I have a lot of stuff that I need to be writing down in, in my the in my vision book in the business tab oh i have a lot to be writing down y'all but we'll get to that at another point in time anyway right now it is 82 degrees it was just raining when i say raining honey it was pouring down raining and so it has stopped raining the humidity is still there and the reason why i don't have a lot of light coming from outside is that it's overcast but i did see two rainbows so i'm excited about that because normally i would still have plenty of sun out but it is overcast and so i said Oop, let me get this video done real quick before i lose a little bit of light that I have. So let's jump right on in. Today's topic is what God has planned for us. I'm going to say that one more time, y'all, because I'm excited. What God has planned for us. That's you, that's me, that is us. So even in our hearing and reading of God's word, we can wonder at times, are his promises really for me? Let me put a pin right there because I believe we all have. And if you say you have and you're telling a tale because we all have asked ourselves that question. God promises us certain things. But is that really for me? Because I see everybody around me getting those promises or, or those promises are coming true for them, but not for me. And so we all have asked that question a time or two. We may even ask if God will stay true to his promises. You know, we all have said, all right, Lord, and I know you promised us ABC, X, Y, Z, but are you really going to do it for me? I see you working in others, but I need you to work in me as well. So Joshua 21 and 45, and all this will be in the description box, says not a single one of all of the good promises the Lord had given to uh, given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Hear what I say. Everything he had spoken came true. It didn't say some things. It didn't say a few things. But it said everything that he had spoken to come true. So no matter what you're going through right now, here are 10 promises of God. And let me just give you a little backstory. I decided that I was going to do this video because I understand. I know that there are some people somewhere right now, you're sitting there and you've got a lot going on. I mean, you have a lot going on between work life, family life, personal life, business life and any other life you can think of you do you have a lot going on and you're questioning whether or not God hears you you're questioning whether or not God even cares about you and your problems and I'm here to tell you that yes he does hear you and yes he does care I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it because you say, Lord, I've been waiting. How much longer do I have to wait, Lord? When, when, when? And we find ourselves asking that a lot. But I just need you to hold on, to not give up, to keep the faith, to keep praying, to keep believing, to keep calling those things as if they were because God has not forgotten about you. He's not forgotten about me. He's not forgotten about us. So let's go into the 10 promises of God. Number one, God promises to strengthen you. Mm. Ephesians, and he talks about this in Ephesians, Ephesians 3, 14 through 16. So I'm not going to go through the whole scriptures. I'll put the scripture reference in the description box. Make sure you go back and read it. But God will be with us in our times of need and he will protect us from our enemies. So God promises to strengthen you. I know right now you feel weak. You feel like you have no power to do anything. You feel like you have no power and no say in anything. But I just want you to know that God's word says that he will strengthen you. Just like he's strengthening you, he's strengthening me. So whenever you have to deal with something, I want you to face it head on knowing that you have the strength to do whatever that thing is that you need to do. You just have to believe... Oh my goodness. Y'all, I'm sorry. I, might, I just happened to turn around because I saw movement and my neighbor then pulled his shirt out. When I tell you his belly is all out to everywhere, ugh. 
anyway i'm sorry i digress what was i saying oh god he, he strengthens us so when you think that you can't or you feel like you can't go on just know that you can you have the strength you have to believe you have it but you do have the strength number two god promises to give us rest Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Make sure you go and read that. But we can take time from our busy schedules to be still and allow him to work in us. God will give you rest. So essentially, God's not going to allow you to go through that thing forever. He's not, now, he may, because there are times where some people had to deal with stuff for 20, 30, 40 years. And finally, God gave them rest from whatever that thing was, but they got it. So I'm not necessarily telling you that God is going to give you that rest that you're looking for tomorrow, the end of today, next week, next month, or even next year, but he will give you rest. So I need you all to make the time. Don't find the time. Make the time to sit back and rest and allow God to, 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 to just get still, get quiet and allow God to do what only he can do. Do you know that a lot of times God can't work in you or even in me because we're just, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. We're just constantly going. Our minds are constantly going and we never take the time to just sit still, to just be quiet and let, and let God do what only he can do. Number three, God promises to take care of our needs. Philippians 4 and 19. God won't supply, now listen y'all, because God won't supply some of our needs, a few of our needs, but he's going to supply all of our needs, no matter how big or small they are. So if you have a need, I want you to listen to this. If you have a need right now, regardless of what it is, it can be a financial need. Maybe you need some help with your mortgage. You need some help with your car note, your car insurance. Maybe you need some help with your cell phone bill. Maybe you need some help to take care of a surgery that you need, but you don't have the money for. Maybe you need some help um, with some repairs around your home. You, you, you need some help in, in your relationship, be it with your significant other or your family or your children, your co-workers. You might need a job, a better job, or, or whatever your need is. It does not matter because the list can go on and on and on, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Whatever your need is, just know that we serve a God that will supply, I'm sorry, that will take care of all of our needs. He will supply what you need. And I don't know about you all, but like the song, the song says, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. He is an on-time God. And I have never, ever, ever, never seen God not show up right on time. You might, it might not be in your time, but God, trust me when I tell you, God shows up right on time. You just keep believing that. So you don't have to worry about that. Number four, God promises to answer our prayers. Matthew 7 and 7. So all we have to do is ask, seek, and knock. And if it shall, and it's, I'm sorry, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto us. The Bible tells us that a lot of times we have not because we ask not. Now, God knows your thoughts. God knows exactly what you need two years from today. You don't know what you're going to need necessarily, but God knows. God knows what you're going to need next week. You have no idea, but he knows. He knows what you're going to need next, one, next month. He knows when something's going to pop up out of the blue. It pops up out of the blue for you, but God knows. He knew that it was coming. But the Bible also tells us, like I said, that we have not because we ask not. And it tells us that we have to ask, we have to seek, and then we shall find. So if you're not opening your mouth like you do when you're back talking, when you're talking trash, when you're talking nonsense, when you're shoving food in it, open your mouth and you talk to God. Tell him what you need. Like I said, God already knows what you need, but he wants you to come to him with your need. And not take him for granted that, okay, he knows what I need, so I don't have to say anything. No, you still need to go and talk to him about your need. Now, there are times, I will say this and I will move on. There are times when God will know that you have a need. You don't know it. 
and he's supplying that need before you even realize that you need it. Yes, that will happen. But if you know right now that you, like I said, you need help with any of the things I've already mentioned, I need you to open your mouth and you go to God and you say, Lord, look, I'm right now I'm standing in need of fill in the blank. Lord, I need you to step in and fix it. I need you to do what only you can or however it is you choose to talk to God. I need you to do that, okay? Because if you don't ask, you can't receive. Number five, God promises to work everything out for our good. Joshua 1 and 5, so God will never leave us nor forsake us. In all our time of need, he's always there. We have been hearing that scripture for many, many, many years. And that is so true. God's never going to leave you nor forsake you. And, and, and you know what? The beauty of it is, is that even when we don't deserve it, and y'all know what I'm talking about, because there are plenty of times that we don't deserve it, but God will never leave us nor forsake us. And that is the beauty of serving a God who loves us that much that he's going to bless us in spite of us. Do you know how many times you acted a, a complete you-know-what and God still blessed you? Why? Because he loves you. And you didn't even stop and say, Lord, forgive me, but he still blessed you anyhow. So keep that in your mind. Number six, God promises to be with us. Joshua 1 and 5, God is with us everywhere we go. Do you realize that there is nowhere you can go that God is not? Let me say that one more time because somebody in the back of the room didn't hear me. There is nowhere that you can go, that I can go, that we can go, that God is not. God is everywhere. Do you know God occupies this space right here where I am right now? No, I can't physically see him sitting here in the passenger seat, but I know he's here. See, I feel God's presence with me no matter where I go. I can go to the bathroom and God's presence is there. He doesn't say, all right, Michelle, well, since you're in the bathroom, I'm gonna wait till you come out. God's presence is everywhere because he doesn't care that you're in the bathroom. God's presence is with you when you go to work. He's with you on your way to work. He's with you at work. He's with you when you're in the grocery store, when you're getting your hair done, when you're going to that dental appointment or that doctor's appointment. He's right there with you on your date. Doesn't matter where you are, God is always there. And that's another thing that, that I love about the Lord. He is with us everywhere we go. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't go anywhere. I mean, anywhere that I don't invite the Holy Spirit to come along with me. Because I want, I know God is going to be there, but I, I'm still, Lord, I'm asking that you go with me as I go do this. Be with me, Lord, as I go do that. Invite his presence in, but just know that God is always with you and there is nowhere. And I mean, absolutely nowhere that you can go that God is not. Number seven, God promises to protect us. Psalms 91 and 2. He is our safe place and in him we never have to be afraid. You know, the next time you have to do something or you have to go someplace, I want you to not be afraid because I want you to remember and tell yourself that God is going to protect you. Do you know how many times you went out someplace that you had no business being and God was there protecting you? He was watching over you. And even though something kicked off, you didn't get hurt. You know why? Because God was there to protect you. And, and there have been many a times where you've been driving down the street and a car came out and you were barely able to avoid an accident. You know why? Because God was there to protect you. So I don't know about you all. That's something to shout. First of all, that's something to shout about, but it's something to also to thank God for. So if you don't take the time, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it alone, but if you are not taking the time to thank God for all that he does. See, every day when I do my prayer meditation time in the morning, as well as before I go to bed, I thank God for everything. I say, Lord, I thank you for the things you've done. I thank you for the things you're doing. I thank you for the things that you're going to do. But I also thank you for the things that you allowed me to go through today, as well as the things that you did not allow me to go through. Because if we only had a clue of the things that were waiting right around the corner for us, and God said, uh-uh, not today, Satan. You will not mess with my child. And he puts his, his arms around you and protects you when the devil's trying to take you out. If you only knew how many times a day that that, that happens, honey, you would shout yourself happy. Mm. And let's see, number eight, God promises freedom from sin. First John 1 and 9, all we have to do is confess our sins to him and he will forgive us. 
when God sets us free, we are free indeed. Also read John 8 and 36. I don't know about you, but I am so thankful because listen, y'all, I'm not perfect. I'm not. I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And y'all know in, in me doing my car conversation, sometimes I say things that I shouldn't. And I do go back and I confess my sin and say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned because I said so and so. I've had to say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned because I've said this or I've done that. I've gone here or I didn't do that. And I do because you know what? Even though I know that God knows that what I did was wrong, he knows my heart. He knows that I'm not a mean and nasty person. But what I did was still wrong. So I still have to go to God and ask him to forgive me for that sin that I've committed. And so he promises us freedom from sin, meaning that there's no sin that you can commit for the most part. And, and that's a whole nother Bible study lesson, but there's no sin that you can commit for the most part that God is not going to forgive. So I need you to just understand that. Now, I'm not saying to go out here and perfect, uh, purposely sin because God is going to forgive you. But I am saying that God will protect. He gives you freedom from your sins, meaning that you can go to him and ask him for forgiveness and he will forgive you and you can move on. Number nine, God promises that nobody mm, can separate us from him. Y'all, that'll shout you happy right there. So make sure you read, read Romans 8 and 38. 838 through 39, nothing that we can do can ever separate us from a God who loves us. Again, you can go out here and you can punch your neighbor in the back. I suggest you don't, but you could. But that's not going to cause God to, to remove himself from us. You can do you cannot do something that God has asked you to do, and God still is not going to leave you. So I am so thankful. I am so, so very thankful that I, that God is not going to, to leave me, especially in my time of need, but he's not going to leave me nor forsake me. Mm. And lastly, number 10, God promised us everlasting life. John 3, 16, y'all know this scripture. You know, I don't care if you don't go to church or you haven't been to church in forever. You know this scripture that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have ever, uh, I'm sorry, have eternal life. It depends on which version of the Bible you're reading, King James, NIV, or all the other many versions. It may read a little differently, but it says the same thing. Again, that'll shout you happy right there. I am so thankful that God, he promised us everlasting life. And all you have to do is believe. Confess with your mouth that you believe that God died on that cross for your sins and his covering is on you for life. I don't know about you, but I believe and I am so thankful. So let me quickly uh, just give you the top 10, not top 10, but the 10 things that God promises us. And number one, I said he promises to strengthen you. He promises to give you rest. He promises to take care of all of your needs. He promises to answer your prayers. He promises to work everything out for your good. He promises to be with you. He promises to protect you. He promises freedom from sin. He promises that nothing can separate, excuse me, separate you from him. And he promises, promises you and me everlasting life. Again, all these will be in the description box. But again, I wanted to just say that it was put on my heart to share those with you. Because I know right now a couple of people that are dealing with some things. And I keep them in my prayer. I write their names down in my prayer, my war binder. And, and I just want you to know that no matter what you're going through, I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to give in. I don't want you to think, well, Jesus, Lord, are, are you ever going to do it for me? You're doing it for everybody else around me, but I'm still suffering. I'm a good person, Lord. Why, why am I still waiting? What's the hold up? And I know you've said that because we all have at some point in time, but just know that God has not forgotten you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And God is going to deliver on his promises. He always makes good on his promises. So don't give up. Don't give in. Don't allow the frustration to make you give up on God. And unfortunately, that's something that a lot of times people do. They throw their hands up and they say, all right, Lord, you know what? I give up. I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not believing anymore because I've been waiting. And guess what? 
you're still waiting. You still haven't got what you needed. So is cutting God out really going to help you? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. And if you try to go out there and take matters into your own hands, you're just going to make things even worse. So I would suggest that you sit back, relax, continue to pray, pray, continue to read God's word, continue to believe, and God will answer your prayers. Y'all, that's it. That's all I have. I just wanted you to, to I, mm, can't even get tongue-tied. That's because I'm hungry. I just wanted to leave you with the fact that God will make good on his promises and he has not forgotten us. Having said that, if you're new to watching my channel, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I do car conversations every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So come on back tomorrow. I have another topic for you. If this is not your first rodeo, I want to say welcome back. You know, I miss you when I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Whatever you're going to do, you know the drill, right? Be safe. Have fun. And just watch your surroundings. Y'all know we live in a crazy world. We do. God is still in control, though. But we live in a crazy world with some crazy folks that don't care about themselves. So they certainly don't care about you. So again, no matter what you do, be safe and be careful. I love you all to the moon and back. You know the drill. You know the spiel. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing at all. So having said that, come on back tomorrow and we'll talk again.